Hey everyone, this is Josh with another cryptocurrency tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about the practice of paper wallets. And more specifically, why I think paper wallets are a bad idea and a bad security practice. This is something that's been around since the inception of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but it's really fallen out of favor in terms of modern security practices for cold storage of Bitcoin funds. So first, let's talk about what a paper wallet is. A paper wallet is simply an encoding of a Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency's private key uh, written down on a medium such as paper, printed, or even engraved into metal. This is done with a single key pair, so one private key and that associated address for that key pair. This is different than writing down a 12 to 24 word seed phrase given to you by a hardware wallet or another type of wallet, and we're gonna get to why that is preferred later. I'm specifically talking about the practice of generating a single Bitcoin key, uh, usually using something like a web application, printing that out, storing it somewhere, and sending funds to those address. There's a couple reasons why this is a bad security practice that has fallen out of favor with security experts in the Bitcoin space. The first reason is that generation of this key pair usually occurs on a networked and general purpose computing device, such as a laptop. So, the idea of a paper wallet is cold storage. You take a key pair and you store it somewhere offline so that uh, exploits, you know, like malware uh, or somebody gaining access to your, your PC in some other way isn't a threat for getting access to the key data. But the problem is the actual generation of this key pair occurs on a general purpose device which could already be infected with malware or even the software itself used to generate the private key could have a backdoor in it. Now, this is not to say that generating your own key pairs if you are a cryptography and security expert is necessarily insecure compared to a 12 to 24 word seed phrase for a whole wallet. But for most people, the recommendation is you get an application like bit address or light address or something that runs in the browser and you, uh, you know, yank out the internet cable and you print it on a computer. But there are so many ways in which your PC could, or the key generation process itself could be compromised uh, and leak key data to an attacker. Most paper wallets, again, are run as web applications. So you're trusting like JavaScript cryptography and a web application, which may or may not be open source. And you also would have to verify that the actual code you're running, even if it is an open source uh, address generator, is not a compromised version of that code. There's just too many pitfalls for non-technical users and most people uh, to be able to trust the key generation process and make sure that it is secure. So for that simple reason, it shouldn't be recommended as a practice for newcomers or even for people that have been around for a while. There's just too many things that you have to know and understand uh, in order to make sure the key generation is safe compared to better alternatives. The second issue is the key encoding format for single key pairs is simply error prone and not human readable. Usually WIF or wallet import format is used for single key pairs. This is a long string of characters in base 58 check encoding. It's uppercase, lowercase, and numerical characters, and it doesn't form any kind of human readable or error correctable sentence like a seed phrase. So if, you, if there's some kind of damage to the paper, like fire damage or water damage, uh, it could render part of the key entirely unreadable. And without that information, you can't regain access to the money stored in that address. You can't spend it without the private key. And finally, here's a big one. Change addresses are really error prone with paper wallets. Again, you have one single key pair, so you have one private key and one public key. The public key hash or address is what you send the money to. 
So when you later go to spend the money in that paper wallet, you have to import that into some online wallet software in order to create transactions. Now what do you think happens if you don't want to spend the full amount? Let's say you've stored one Bitcoin in a paper wallet and you decide to spend half a Bitcoin to buy a Tesla. It's a great use case for Bitcoin. What do you think happens to the other 0.5 Bitcoin? Does that change go back to the paper wallet or does it go to some other address? It turns out that by default, for most wallets, that change will go back into an address that's generated by the, the online wallet software itself and not the key pair that is in your paper wallet. So let's say you spin up Exodus or Coinomi or Jack's wallet and import a private uh, key from your paper wallet and you only want to spend half that paper wallet. You may entirely delete that wallet from your computer thinking that the remainder of your funds are still in the paper wallet when in fact they were sent to a change address that belongs to that wallet that you didn't back up. That means that money is permanently lost. You have to understand change addresses and Bitcoin transactions fully in order to use single key pair paper wallets safely. And that is another reason why, as a general rule, I do not think this is a practice that should be recommended. If you're an expert user, if you are a power user, yeah, maybe you understand how to use this correctly. But this is not a practice that we, as the broader cryptocurrency uh, technical community, should be recommending to people because it's simply too error prone. Now, what should you do instead for cold storage or long-term offline savings of your Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, or any other cryptocurrency that you want to use? You should instead buy a dedicated hardware device called a hardware wallet. Uh, brand examples of this include Trezor, KeepKey, or Ledger. And what these wallets do is they generate keys entirely offline on a dedicated piece of hardware that only does Bitcoin cryptography. That means there's a much lower attack surface or potential vulnerabilities that attackers could use to gain access to that key data. Key data on the device is generally encrypted, and it should be encrypted, and key generation is done using a cryptographically secure random number generator on that hardware device, rather than on a general purpose device like a laptop, where uh, generation of that key could potentially leak information. That's a much better approach because it again has a much lower attack surface than using a general purpose device like a PC. These wallets will give you a 12 to 24 word seed phrase which serves as a backup for all of the cryptocurrency addresses, private keys, and multiple cryptocurrencies that that wallet uh, may generate for you. And so you could store your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Litecoin, as many cryptocurrencies as are supported by that hardware device with one 12 to 24 word um, random number seed as the backup. This is part of a series of standards including BIP39, BIP32, BIP44. You can look up some of that technical information if you're interested. But essentially what this means is you have one seed that can back up all of your transactions. So if something happens to the hardware wallet or something happens um, to your computer, you can still restore access to all of those transactions, all of those funds using that seed. And a great thing about the BIP39 standard is that this is a much less error prone and much more human readable format for key data. What these 12 to 24 seemingly random words are is an encoding of the randomness used to generate your Bitcoin private keys. And understanding English words is much easier for us as humans than it is a wallet import format. This standard was designed ingeniously, including so that you only need the first four characters of a word to know which word out of the BIP39 dictionary that is. So if there's some kind of water or fire damage or some sort of issue with your key, you're going to have a much easier time repairing that key data and regaining access to the funds than you would if you were using a wallet import format, just random base 58 characters. It really makes it much easier for you to do safe and secure backups. Uh, there's a lot of technologies out there now that you can even engrave this information or store this information in metal so that it's more fireproof and things like that. 
And finally, never type this 12 to 24 word backup into a networked device. The reason for this is it breaks the security model of a hardware wallet. It doesn't matter if you yank the network cable out of your laptop. The whole purpose of using a hardware wallet is that key generation and key storage is always entirely offline on a dedicated device. So don't go importing your hardware wallet seed into an online wallet. Use the hardware wallet itself plugged into the computer to sign transactions when you need to send funds. If you need to restore access to this wallet for some reason and you don't have access to the hardware wallet itself, just understand that once you put it into a laptop, your security is only as good as a laptop or a mobile wallet. It's no longer considered cold storage. And so at the soonest available time, you should send those funds back to a new hardware wallet seed phrase. I hope this information has been useful to you. Security in the cryptocurrency space is really important because with the power of being your own bank comes the responsibility to make sure that your keys and your funds are kept secure from attackers. I hope you learned something new with me today. As always, there's an article that accompanies this video on the Chain Tutorials website. Thanks again for learning with me today, and I'll see you soon.